We posted up on Facebook today um, comments and questions, what you wanted to see videoed, so we're going to just try this. Um, Colin's going to read them off. I glanced through them. I don't know what most of the questions are. Colin's going to read them off, and we'll answer some of them. A lot of them we'll just fucking won't answer because some of it's stupid. Go. All right. Uh, why don't you guys make a plate carrier? Um, we made plate carriers. There's, there's, I don't know, maybe 60 or 70 of them out there. We did them for, for the Navy. Um, plate carriers take a lot of time. They're intricate. It's just something, it wasn't our meat and potatoes in the beginning, and currently we just can't build enough of the stuff that we have orders for, like micro rigs. Like, we, we have thousands of orders for micro rigs all the time. We're constantly building micro rigs, and um, there's some good companies out there making plate carriers right now. All right, and let's see. How many cans of beer does a bolt bag hold? Fuck, I don't, I don't know. I don't drink anything out of a can. You shouldn't either. Yeah. Next. Will you do some videos about prepping? Yeah, we'll probably we'll eventually do some of those. We'll it's it's more of a lifestyle. Like we don't even I don't even think of it as prepping really. Um, <clears throat> being in this industry and just living the way we've lived so long, it's just kind of second nature. But yeah, we'll we'll do something along those lines. We got to figure out how to break up the YouTube channel for those videos so that we've got a couple different little sub forums to to categorize those. I know when James started doing YouTube videos everything was dumped in on one page and he had a it was a, a long task to get that all sorted out very cool i guess i should say the, these uh, people's names since we got these from facebook uh this is tyler gillum asks how are the cocks born i'm guessing maybe where the combat cock came from the cock started um well we, we've said we've said it many times there's we need to do a video just on that uh we had a kid working for us uh the cocks originally were a pin cushion from Sunset magazines or Better Homes and Gardens or something. We had this kid working for us. His, his mom made the first one and um, he's going to California and wanted to get a Domo doll out of uh, one of those crane machines. Couldn't get it. I said take the cock and take pictures of that around California while you're home for Christmas. And he said no that's a stupid idea. I said bullshit. If you don't fucking do that don't come back here. So he did it and uh, people loved him. And I kind of, we set it up as a side time little gig for him to kind of learn the business aspects of business. And uh, he just, um, it, it was a fight the whole way. What should we name it? I'm going to name it the Battle Bird or the something chicken. I go, no, we're going to call it the Combat Cock. No, we can't call it that. Yes, that's what it's fucking, it's the Combat Cock. So set up a website, set up URL, set up its own Facebook page. And it was just one thing after the other. Um, we'll do a, a whole video on that. But that's, that's where it came from years ago. All right. Uh, this is an interesting question, so I just figured we should ask it. Harry Bennett asks, how much handsome do they dump into the Camden water? I don't even know what that means. Yeah, I'm not sure what you mean. And for all intents and purposes, people like us brought the handsome to Camden. Yeah, so. there wasn't any handsome before. Like, James was here, but he wasn't, like, good looking then. He was just James. And, uh, he was working on his shit. James is a good looking motherfucker now, but I like to think that that's because of me. Like, there's no denying if we look at past photos that I had this before James, and I had short hair before James, and uh, James has evolved kind of to become me, I think. And um, why wouldn't he? I mean, shit. It's not easy. Let's see. Um, any plans on future product? Future products, I guess, new products, uh, prototypes, and things. Shit, we've always got a hundred new things that you guys haven't seen, or a lot of them you've seen, and we just haven't brought them to market. Right, right now, it, it's it's constantly a catch twenty two. We we get we hire more labor and build stuff, and uh, we just can't ship it fast enough. So we hire more people, and we get the shipping up, and then we we're good at it, and we take more orders and get more orders, and we got to hire more people. It's just a, it's a constant circle. It's one step forward, two step back always. And uh, we added 1,600 square feet to the back of the shop for storage, and um, brought in a trailer that's got some storage in it, and we're just constantly outgrowing space. Like, we're literally, we're out of space now. We hired uh, four more girls now in the last two, three weeks to sew down there. They're up to speed. We, I've got new sewing machines. I've got more damn sewing machines coming in. I don't even know where we're going to put those. So we're going to reorganize the sew shop all over. And uh, 
we just we're, we're out of space. We need to start looking at, at an, an additional building or another home. Otis Bogue asks, how did you make the leap from the beginnings of SOE to hiring your staff that you have now and doing business to support everyone? Man, I always had different jobs. Like even as a, as a kid, they used to drop me off um, on construction sites at, at age 13 with a pickaxe, a sledgehammer, and a wheelbarrow, and I would break up concrete slabs or swimming pools or ponds, whatever it was, and wheelbarrow all that shit around there. And um, I still did construction work, decorative brick block and masonry, and um, just, I mean, you name it, odd jobs, just constantly. Delivery drivers, all kinds of different delivery drivers, spent a lot of time driving. And uh, always had those jobs when I was doing this as a hobby. But the best thing really that ever happened to me, and really the scariest at the time probably, was getting fired. Like I was taking time off for, for shows out of state. We'd have to, you know, leave on a Thursday or a Friday. And they finally just had it and they fired me and it just pushed me to do this real. And um, that was really the best thing that ever happened looking looking back at it. It just taught me that, you know, whether whether you have the orders or not, it, if you hustle, they'll come. I mean the work always came. I've I've always done things. I never really had a plan like when there's when there's something I want, if I'm just laser targeted on it and figure out how to get it and a lot of times I'll buy it or get it and then figure out how to pay for it after the fact which just once you have it you're committed you've got to do it so I just I work better in, in chaos and turmoil and um, just that that's how it's always been. Dennis Enright asks will you ever make tiny cocks? We, we made some tiny cocks a couple of the ladies down at the shop built some a few years ago filled them up with BBs like little um, monkey fists and they're cool, but they're super, super labor intensive. Like to make something small, it takes two to three times longer than just building the normal cocks because they're so tiny and so meticulous, and we just can't run the machines at speed. And everything about it is just is just magnified the, the uh, difficulties of it. So I, I don't know how soon you'll see one. Let's see. Chris John asks, do you plan to make a bigger shop in the future to meet the demand, or are you content with the size that you're at? We kind of hit on that earlier. Man, yeah, we get, we're going to have to find an, a bigger building. We're looking at some manufacturing capabilities in Alabama, um, in addition to what we have here. Um, yeah, we're going we're to have to. Um, Dan Bo asks, do you make neck pillowcase covers like your regular pillowcases? No. Yeah. yeah. A lot, a lot of what we make is made nowadays, especially um, because we we want it. It's items that we wanted to make. All the vehicle stuff, we started looking at doing overland adventures and building up trucks. And I've got a suburban and a big truck and an excursion. And uh, the visor covers came because we we wanted those on a K5 Blazer back in the 90s. We had Velcro door panels that you could put mag pouches and shit on. And uh, a lot of the stuff we build now just comes from. We, us wanting it, and I just, I don't use an egg pillow. Uh, David Larson asks, tell the story about the fleshlight. <laughs> the fleshlight. Uh, AR-15, there's a, in the tactical forum, there was a thread about the fleshlight pouch, and everybody asking about it, and it was a long, drawn-out, heated conversation, went multiple pages. So we did one as a joke, put them up, it got us a lot of traffic. Uh, my Facebook page actually got locked because of that. We had pictures of the pouch, and the flashlight, and we just had these holier than thou fucking, um, I don't even know who they were, just complaining about the flashlight pouch, about it, it, it being on there. The crazy thing is, Facebook itself has a flashlight page. If you go to flashlight or you look up porn on Facebook, there are a shitload of porn dedicated Facebook pages that show porn on them. But our page got locked over it, and that was, I think, probably the first time we got locked. And then we got locked again for saying black cock. When we put the black cocks up, the page got locked the second time years ago for putting up a picture of a chicken and saying black cock. So. Let's see. Chris, uh, I believe his name is Kaggle. What is your, who is your favorite philosopher? Shut the fuck up. Seriously, Chris? All right, and let's see. How does one? Uh, this is Cody Mays. Ask. How oh, does hold one, on, hold on. Oh wait. Chris is a friend of ours, so don't don't take that the wrong way. That's a joke. Um, Chris spends some time here. Uh, he's a fucking super super talented tattoo artist, and he rides a ridiculous motorcycle that 
It's one of those stretched out, like you see black guys with a fucking little skull cap wearing. That's the guy. Yeah, that's, that's that cool. guy. Very cool. Cody Mays, how does one become an SOE dealer? Um, man, we're, we're pretty easy and informal. If you have money, we want your money. And if you sell gear, you should be selling our gear. Um, we're not the easiest people to deal with. We're not the, uh, we don't have a bunch of um, published literature. We don't give out free shit for you to sell our shit. SOE draws attention to businesses. And a lot of businesses that carry SOE, people search SOE product and find it embedded on their website and go buy it there. Um, we have a dealer margin. We don't have a dealer price list. You literally have to calculate your margin off of our retail published prices. And uh, we build your shit up, put it in a box. When it's ready to ship, we run your credit card. We ship it on your account. Very cool. And let's see. We have one from the gentleman up here we should ask. This is this. Pete Manning. Have you ever done or thought of doing nylon holsters? This is, he says, ask the fat guy that Kydex hurts the fat rolls. We did, we did nylon holsters for a long time before there ever was Kydex holsters. Safari Land was just starting to do that kind of stuff, the, the old style 6004. Um, we, don't, we don't make nylon holsters. The, the Kydex holsters just work better. We never really did concealment type holsters. We did a few of them. And where our, our leg subload holsters, our tack holsters, we sold thousands of those. We'd sell a few of the others. We do a belt slide holster, super simple, easy to make, works for almost any gun. It is not in any way better than Kydex. Kydex are a good leather holster. You just can't beat it hands down. So we just stopped making nylon holsters. Uh, Logan Rogers asks, just how many belts do you sell a week? How many we sell? I don't, I don't know how many we sell. We actually, like, no bullshit make and ship over 100 belts a day and really we've been saying that number so long it's probably it's, higher yeah, it's I mean you, you pack those yeah, it's I more. mean all day long we're bringing up piles of belts um, we get so many belts that we can't leave them till the end of the day to uh, take a photo to really show that's why we sit you know I just I got bored taking the picture guys got bored seeing it but every time a pile of belts would come up it'd be 30 40 belts and that comes up several times yeah, a day six times a day um, so we just quit doing them all right, showing the pictures. Um, this is the last question that wasn't asked. Uh, this is Jared Davidson. He said, "Just how often do you and the SOE family get to train to train with James Yeager?" Anytime we want to, as much as we want to. Um, Amanda, when we moved here, she took fighting pistol in the winter, um, freezing cold, sleeting, and then took it in the summer. Completely different classes, completely different method of carry. Um, Cody who was nine at the time, 10, he's behind the camera there, at 10 was at the time TAC Response's youngest student, took fighting rifle, freezing cold, AR, um, little 10 literally he'd put the gun down and it would freeze closed. They'd have to smack the bolt um, to get it to open up. Uh, Hunter Kaysen, friend of the family, kind of assisted him during that and that, their two-man tactics and stuff, that was his partner through there. Hunter used, I, I remember that pretty vividly, how many used HK-93, I think it was. That was a, I remember a 93 was the first rifle I ever shot as a kid. The first long gun I ever fired was an HK-93. Um, so we can take it as much as we want. If you work at SOE, you can take any classes you want through TAC Response. Um, we take care of all James' uh, staff, his cadre comes in, they all use our, our gear. Um, we just hook those dudes up and the training um, you know, in the early days when we moved here, James provided the ammo for my kids to take classes and Amanda and, you know, several of my staff. Nowadays, um, any class you want to take, I mean, it's, it's just, it's an open door policy. We can take whatever classes through TAC response, wherever they are, whenever they are. Very cool. I think that's it. All right. We got, uh, we got to get ready for the gym. Is that still filming? We gotta get ready for the gym and uh, load everybody up. Starting next week, we're putting on six new staff members. We'll start to go to the gym, and uh, that's it. Let's go get ready.